Hello and uh, welcome back to the discussion on ABL trees. In the previous video, we have seen what are ABL trees. Just to recap, ABL trees are the binary search trees with an additional property to be satisfied at each node of the binary search tree. This property that we will call it as ABL property. So what's the ABL property? At every node, the difference between the uh, heights of the children can be at most one. In other words, absolute value of the height of the left child minus the height of the right child should be at most one. How do you, in order to verify that a binary search tree is an APL tree, we need to maintain a numerical variable called height at each node of the ABL tree. Once you insert, how does the insert algorithm work? When you insert in when you want to insert a node, you first search for the node and insert it there. Once we insert it, so what may happen is that the height of the ancestors of the node that you inserted might increase. Similarly, when you want to delete a node, you first search for the node to be deleted. Deleted the node. Once you delete the node, the heights of the ancestors might decrease. When the heights either increase or decrease, what may happen is that the APL property may be violated. Updating the heights in the case of insert and delete is easy, but what do we do? Because of these updates, the APL property is violated. We do what is known as uh, rotations. Uh, so in this video, we are going to first look at what are rotations and how these rotations will help us in uh, establishing the APL property. In the first part of this video, we're going to learn what these uh, rotations are. And in the second part, part of the uh, video, we're going to see how these rotations will help us in restoring the ABL property. Note that you don't have to worry about uh, the search uh, when you do the search. When you do the search, structure of the ABL tree will not change, height of none of the nodes will change. So if the ABL property is uh, maintained before you do the search, it will continue to be uh, true after you do the search. The only cases that we need to consider here is what uh, the AVL property may be violated when you do insert and delete. So let uh, Z be the node uh, where the AVL property is violated. The Z will have two, two children. Uh, and uh, since the AVL property is violated, uh, both of them will have uh, different uh, heights, and uh, uh, so one will be at least uh, two less than the height of the other one. So uh, let's uh, among the two children of Z, let's look at the uh, child which has the maximum height. So we'll call that as Y. Y is the uh, child of Z with the maximum height. So since y is the uh, child of z with the maximum height, height of z, z will be exactly equal to height of uh, y plus one. Similarly, we will define x to be the child of y with the maximum height. In other words, h of y will be is equal to h of x plus one. So the note that uh, since z is a node where the ABL property is violated, in the previous video towards the end, we have seen that height of this node should be at least one okay great uh, strictly greater than one so uh, x and y will be valid nodes in the apl tree right so the if the height is uh, at least two height of y is at least one and the height of x will be at least zero so in other words x and y will be valid pointers these will not be the null pointers now when we want to discuss uh, the rotations, uh, so what matters is what is the relative position of uh, x with respect to the parent, whether x is the left child or the right child. Similarly, whether y is the left child of z or the right child of z. So we have two options for y. You also have two options for x. So that gives us the four options. Let's consider these four options. Uh, the first case that I'm looking at here is that y is the left child of uh, z and x is the left child of y and the second case we'll call it as case 0 1 2 and 3 the, the this first case is y is the left child of z and x is a 
right child of y. And the case two is y is the right child of z and x is the left child of z. And the last case, that's the case three, is z, y is a uh, right child of z and x is also a right child of z, right side of y. So, so depending on the relative positions, uh, so we will classify it into four cases. The first one is also called as left left. The second one is called left right. Third one is called right left. And the fourth one is called right right. So given the value of z and the values of x and y, how will you identify which of these four cases it is? So what we do is that we will, uh, when you go to a right, we will uh, write down one. And if you go to the left, we'll write down zero. For example, in the first case, when you go left left, so what you have is zero, zero. Zero is zero is will correspond to the binary number corresponding to zero, zero, zero. So in the second case, first is left. After that, you have a right term. So the binary uh, number that I'm going to assign to this is zero, one. So zero, one, the binary equivalent of this is one. Similarly, in the uh, third case, the first I take a right term, and then you take a left term. The binary number that I'm going to associate with this uh, case is one zero. And the third scenario is both are right, right? So I have one one. One one is equivalent to three. So it's easy to uh, identify which case it is. First, we have a variable which is c is equal to zero. If you're going to be a right increment of one by one, right? So that will, uh, then you multiply, after you take the first term, you multiply the uh, variable by two. So if you still have a zero, then you are in the first or the second case. If the variable is two, then you're in the third or fourth case. Again, you do the same thing. If you take a left turn, don't change the counter. If you take a right turn, you increment the counter by one. Let's do an example. If C is zero, uh, in the first case, uh, when I come to Y, C will continue to be zero and double it continue to be zero. When I go to the left, I don't increment the counter, I get a zero. In the second case, uh, I don't increment the counter, it is zero, but I double it. After that, I take a right turn, then you take a right turn, I increment it by one. So the, this becomes case one. When you go to the third case, I first go to a yeah, right child, so I increment the counter by one. I double the counter, then I take a left turn. When I take a left turn, the counter don't increase. So the count remains two. In the third case, first I take a uh, right turn, I increment the counter by one, then I double it, I get two. And then I, since I'm taking the right turn again, I add one. So this becomes three. So once we have these three rotations, uh, the first uh, one and the last ones are called uh, zigzag rotation, and the middle two are called zigzag rotation. So the zigzag rotation comes from left right or right left, uh, right right. Zigzag uh, rotation comes from either the left right or right left. If the relative positions are same, either it could be left left or right right. Then these kind of rotations, we're going to call it a zigzag rotation. And the other rotations where it's either left-right rotation or a right-left rotation will be called a zigzag rotation. Let's first discuss about the uh, zigzag rotation. After that, we'll come back to zigzag rotation. Notice that when you are going to rotate, uh, so you're going to rotate with respect to Z. This Z is a node where there is a violation of the property. This node is part of a, this is a part of a UVL tree. You are going to look at the subtree which is root, uh, root, which is rooted at Z. After you rotate, depending on which of these four cases are, either if the node X or Y becomes the root of this subtree. So this entire subtree will be replaced with the rotated node that we're going to get, which is either X or Y, depending on the case, this entire subtree you're going to replace. If you're making the pointer changes, you have to go to the parent of the node that you're deleting. And if it's a left child, the left child of that should be to start pointing to X and Y, and the parent pointer of this should point to whatever that node is. Similarly, if uh, Z is a right child of the parent node, then that parent node's right child will be changed to X and Y. In other words, uh, you just imagine a node where there is a rotation happening. You are going to change the subtree which is rooted at here. 
after you root, uh, do the rotation, depending on in two cases, we'll have x will be the root of the subtree and y will be the root of the subtree in the other two cases. Whichever case is, the entire subtree should be replaced. So now let's try to understand uh, what these rotations are. Let's start with the first one, which is the zigzag rotation. Uh, this is a left left rotation. Uh, so this <coughs> z is the node where there is a violation of Fabian property. Y is the child of fate, and X is also a child of fate. Uh, and this X and Y are chosen such that height of uh, Z is one more than the height of Y, and uh, height of uh, Y is one more than the height of X. So now, uh, so we don't know what are all the other children of uh, these nodes. Let's say that T1 is the left child of X, T2 is the right child of X. Uh, T3 is the right subtree of Y and uh, the T4 that I have is the right subtree of uh, Z. So the triangles indicate that uh, these are the subtrees, the circles indicates that these are individual nodes. So now when you are given uh, the um, subtree uh, on the left hand side, zigzag rotation in this case, uh, when you do the rotation, you get the subtree on the right hand side y becomes the root of the node and x becomes the left child z becomes the right child and the pointers of you know, so the left child of x is t1 right child of x is t, the subtree t2 the left child of um, the left subtree of um, z is t3 and the right subtree of uh, z is t4 so when um, this is what uh, happens when you do the rotation uh, in this case. Now, uh, so how is this uh, rotation is defined? The picture tells you how to rotate. Uh, make y as the root, make x as the left child and y as the right child. And uh, the left and right child of uh, x and y, x and z are uh, uh, shown in the picture. So now looking at this picture, Right, so we can write down, uh, so what are all these pointer changes that we need to do? Uh, so I have written down the pointers below, right? So if you look at the child of uh, X, they will not change. T1 uh, and T2 are the left and right childs of uh, the node X, which will continue to be uh, the left and right uh, child respectively. T4 is the right child of Z, which will continue to be the right child of Z. And everything else will change. T3 becomes the left child of Z, and the left child of Y is X, and the will continue to be uh, left child of uh, Y, and but the right child of Y will change it to Z. So whatever these pointer changes that I need to make out of T1, T2, T3, so only thing that changes that T1, uh, uh, T2, and T4 doesn't change in this case. T3 by definition is the right child of Y. Okay. And uh, so Y right child becomes Z and one Z left child is T3. And uh, uh, in the next line, I'm updating what are all the pointer changes that needs to be made. T3's parent is pointing to Z now. The parent pointer of T1, T2, T4 will not change. And the parent pointer of um, Y, uh, Z will be Y. And the parent pointer of y is this is before I change the parent pointer of z, right? So what I said is that this is a uh, z is a subtree, so there is a parent for it, right? So the y's parent will point will point to whatever that node is, right? That's what uh, this one is doing. So uh, so one of the important property of this rotation is that if the, the binary search property is uh, satisfying on each of these nodes. Uh, before the rotation, then the binary search property will continue to be true after the uh, rotation. In other words, uh, this rotation that we are defining preserves the binary search property. How do you verify that the trees have binary search property or not? So we know that you just do the in order traversal of the binary search tree. If uh, it's an uh, in increasing order, then uh, this uh, all these nodes will satisfy the binary search property. So now, so, uh, as I said uh, before the rotation, if the binary search property is satisfied, 
you do the in-order traversal. So what I have written down is the in-order traversal uh, of the left subtree. So what you can verify that this will be exactly same as the um, in-order traversal of the uh, right, uh, right uh, trig that has become. In other words, uh, the in-order traversal of the, uh, the subtree before the rotation will be exactly same as the in-order traversal of the subtree after the rotation. So this particular rotation that we are going to define will um, preserve the binary size property. So what uh, I want you to verify is that pause for a minute, look at these diagrams, uh, ensure that um, the in-order traversal of these two nodes is uh, exactly what this is required. And I have written down the pointers, changes that are required to change the tree on the left hand side to the change on the right hand side. That means that if you do these pointer changes, this is what defines the rotation. So when you do the implementation, I will just uh, um, copy paste uh, these uh, pointer changes that will define our rotation. I want you to pause uh, for a minute and verify that uh, these pointer changes will give you the uh, uh, tree on the right hand side from the tree on the left hand side. So now let's look at the um, other case um, where uh, it's a right right rotation. Uh, the pointers T1, T2, T3, T4 are uh, shown as in the diagram. When you do the rotation, you get the uh, tree on the right side. Uh, again, this will also preserve the uh, binary search property because you can see that uh, the in-order traversal of both the trees is the same. Again, I want you to pause for a minute and check the pointer changes that I'm doing uh, and verify that this in fact gives you this rotation. So the other case that we have to consider is the left-right rotation. This is the first kind of zigzag rotation that we are looking at. The T1, T2, T3, T4 are the subtrees uh, which are all uh, as defined in the table. When you do the rotation here, instead of Y becoming the root, X becomes the root of the um, subtree. And in this case, uh, Y becomes the left child and Z becomes the right child. And T1, T2, T3, T4 are the uh, uh, other subtrees which are rooted at Y and Z. Notice that uh, the, the T1, which is a left child of Y, will continue to be the left child of uh, Y. The left child, right child of Z, which is T4, will continue to be the right child of Z. So the left child of Y1 and the right child of Z, you don't have to change, okay? And T2 is the left child of, uh, uh, T2 uh, the, is the left child of uh, X, which will end up becoming the right child of Y. And uh, T3, which is the right child of X, will end up becoming the left child of Z. And uh, Y and Z uh, will become the left and right child of uh, X, respectively. So what are the pointer changes that are required? It's written below. If you do these pointer changes, you get the tree on the right hand side from the tree on the left hand side. And uh, if you're maintaining the uh, binary uh, tree with the parent pointers, then you have to change the parent pointers also. But if you are uh, maintaining uh, binary search tree without parent pointers, then you can just ignore all the uh, parent pointer changes that I am uh, doing here. Here, uh, the T2P means that uh, this is uh, T2 parent. Again, I want you to pause for a minute here, to verify that uh, this rotation preserves the KVL prop, uh, binary search property. In other words, uh, I have written down here the in order traversal of the, uh, the tree before the rotation and after the rotation, both will be same. And uh, the pointer changes that I have written here is in fact, uh, will give you the rotation on the other side. The last case that we have is the uh, right left rotation. Uh, the T1, T2, T3, T4 are uh, defined as uh, before. The X continues to be the root here, but the uh, Z becomes the left child now and Y becomes the right child. And the either other pointer changes, the diagram, uh, the picture says more than what I have to say. And uh, just ensure that uh, the equations that I have written below will uh, do this rotation. 
again pause for a minute find the inner traversals and check that that will be same for both of them and also check that these point changes will give you these rotations so in summary uh, we define uh, the z is the node where there is a violation of abc property then uh, we define the x and y then we did the rotation the four types of rotations depending on the relative position of uh, x with respect to its parent and uh, the position of y with respect to uh, the z so what is the use of this how will this uh, help us to restore the uh, abel property in the case of insertion and deletion is what we are going to discuss in the next future slide first let's consider uh, the deletion case so let's just recall how the deletion actually happens uh, when you want to delete a node first you start with the root node so start for the search start searching for this node uh, once you search this node uh, to delete that one. So there were a, a, a three cases. Uh, in the second case, we are only just going to replace this with the uh, in order to predecessor. In that case, uh, uh, the height of the node which is replaced will not change. Okay. So we need to discuss only the first and second case where you are actually deleting the node with the zero or one. So when you delete a node with uh, uh, the number of children is either zero or one. So what will happen is that uh, the height of the parents may decrease. If the height of the parent decreases, then the height of the parent of the parent also could decrease. So once you did the insertion, you go to the parent, check if the height actually uh, changes. And if it changes, you have to keep going up uh, all the way to update the height of the again. I repeat, height of the ancestor node of the node that you deleted might decrease. I mean, there's no guarantee that it will decrease. May uh, decrease in some cases, it may not decrease because of this uh, decrease in the heights. Uh, the ABL property in some of these nodes, uh, with the transistor nodes of the node that you deleted, might you know, be violated. So, uh, after you delete a node, go to the parent and keep going to the parent. And when you go to a uh, node, you just check whether the ABL property is violated. If the ABL property is violated, you call the rotation function. So the rotation function will decide uh, the x, y, z and do one of these four rotations. Uh, and then uh, you update the height of the node. If uh, the height does not change and the evil property is also not violated, then you can stop that because height of this node is not changing. So the height of the pairing nodes also will not change. Okay, uh, Because I uh, increase, I uh, deleted a node in the subtree. And the parent pointer's height did not change. So if you go to the parent of this node, it will not change. Okay. So your uh, algorithm after inserting, you keep going up. First check the variable property is violated. The variable property is violated. Call the rotation function with the node z, which is the node where there is a violation of variable property. Once you do the rotation, update the height of this. And if the height also doesn't change and the variable property of the node is also uh, not violated, then you break out the loop. Right, so your insertion algorithm terminates that. Now, uh, so when you do rotation, what really happens? Right, so if uh, the do the rotation, let's look at the picture. So there are two symmetric cases of zigzag, and uh, there will be two symmetric cases of zigzag. We will discuss only one of the zigzag, and we will uh, discuss uh, one of the zigzag. The same will happen for the other uh, uh, symmetric case. So let's start with the uh, zig, uh, zigzag. Let's call the height of uh, z to be h. If the height of uh, z is h, then the height of y must be h minus 1. And the height of x should be h minus 2. Why is this? Because that's the way y is defined. y is defined such that the height of z is 1 plus the height of y. x is the child of y such that height of y is 1 plus the height of x. So um, if the height of z is h, then the y should have h minus 1 height and the x should have h minus 2 is the height. Now, can you, so this, we are discussing deletion and there is a violation of ABL property at z. And the height of z is h, uh, uh, 1 plus the height of y. Can you think of where did the, which subtree did the deletion actually happen? It's easy to see that the deletion ha actually happened in D4. 
So I deleted a node here. I went up. The height of this actually decreased. And when I went to the node here, earlier it was h minus 1, h minus 2. So there was no violation of AVL property. The difference was 1. But I deleted a node here. So which reduced the height of uh, T4 from h minus 2 to h minus 3. Uh, so there is a violation of AVL property. That's why I stopped at that. Since uh, the height of y is uh, h minus 1, and we are saying that uh, there's a violation of ABL property um, at uh, Z. That means that uh, the height of uh, TF4 should be H minus 3. In other words, uh, this height is H minus 1. So if there is a violation of ABL property at Z, then the height of T4 should be smaller than or equal to H minus 3. It's only going to be H minus 3 because before the deletion, ABL property as uh, uh, was not violated only because of the uh, deletion the avl property as uh, violated so the height can decrease only one by one so if the avl property was not violated before i deleted then the height of this node has to be h minus one if it is smaller than h minus uh, no sorry less than it or to h minus two uh, but uh, when i delete a node height will only decrease by one Right, so the height of TF4 uh, has to be uh, h minus 3. Now, if we come to T3, the height of this node uh, can be same as uh, h minus 2 or it can be 1 less. It cannot be more than h minus 2. If it is more than h minus 2, then the y height will not be h minus 1, it will be the maximum of uh, left and right. It cannot be smaller than h minus 3. If it is smaller than h minus 3, then there is a violation of ABL property at the location Y. We remember that the deletion happened in uh, T4. So before the so if the node here is small than H minus three, then there is a violation of ABL property before I deleted at that, right? So since we are assuming the delete before the deletion, the ABL property is um, satisfied at this node. If this node has H minus two, this has to be at least H minus three. But it cannot be more than h minus two. Now x has a height uh, h minus two. So the t1 and t2, the height, one of them should certainly have uh, h minus three, and the other node can have either h minus three or h minus four. So one node certainly should have h minus three because uh, height of x will be the max of uh, one plus this. So one of the nodes should have certainly h minus three. The other one is either h minus 3 or h minus 4. Something cannot be h minus 4, uh, smaller than h minus 4 because in that case, there will be a violation of ABL property at x. Now, when you do the rotation, the height of t1, t2, t3, t4 will not change. They will remain same. But the height of x, y, and z, uh, we will have to update. Let's look at how it uh, turns out to be. T1 and T2, what we said is that uh, one of them is H minus 3 and the other one is H minus 4. Uh, so the height of EX will continue to be H minus 2. There will be no change in the height of X. So T4 is H minus 2, H minus 3. T3 is either H minus 3 or H minus 4. So if T3 is H minus 2, then the height of Z will be H minus 1. Because I, in that case, I will end up taking the maximum of h minus 2 and h minus 3, which is h minus 2, and plus 1 is h minus 3. If the height of t3 happens to be h minus 3, then the height of z will be uh, h minus 2. So the height of x will certainly h minus 2, but the uh, height of z will be either h minus 1 or h minus 2. Now let's come back to the height of z. If the uh, height of z is h minus 1, then the height of y will be h. If the height of z is h minus 2, then the max of h minus 2 and h minus 2 will be h minus 1. Okay, uh, max of h minus 2 and h minus 2 plus 1 will be h minus 1. If the z has height h minus 1, then I have, when I take the max of uh, h minus 2 and h minus 1, I get the max at h minus 1. So plus 1 will be the height which is h. Okay, so depending on the height of um, the node T3, um, the height of the node Y will either be H or H minus 1.
so before uh, so the remember that uh, when i go to the node side the first thing that i check is whether there is a violation of avl property so the hatch is before the uh, insertion uh, sorry deletion so i first check violation and uh, if there is a violation i rotate it so when i rotate it uh, i get a sub tree before the rotation height of this tree is h but after the rotation it's either h or h minus 1 if it is h uh, then uh, my algorithm can stop now because uh, my height of the sub tree will not is not changing so if you go to the pairing node the height of the chain node there also is not going to change and i can guarantee that there will be no violation of avl properties because height of the pairing node is not changing but if the height of the y becomes h minus 1 so the height of the sub tree before the rotation was h minus h but if the height of y becomes h minus 1 then still there is the, the height of the sub tree is decreasing by 1 so we will update the height of the sub tree but when you go to the parent of y because in the sub tree there is a violation uh, the height has decreased uh, there may be a violation of avl property at the parent of y so if the height decreases as long as the height decreases we have to keep going up uh, and check whether the avl property is satisfied if the avl property is violated then we have to uh, do the rotation once you do the rotation uh, in any case update the height if the uh, avl property is not violated and the height doesn't change then our algorithm stops so the important thing to note is that in this subtree rooted at side there was a violation of avl property because the difference between the height of y the the and the other tree is h minus 1 and h minus 3 but you know that if what you notice is that after this rotation the all the nodes in the subtree satisfy the avl property that is the crucial thing we do this rotation so that after you do the rotation at every node in this subtree the avl property is satisfied but we don't know about the pairing pointer so that we will do recursively check so uh, it's easy to see uh, why the avl property is satisfied uh, the difference between the height of uh, uh, h and j is either 0 or 1 here it's also either 0 or 1 here also is h minus 2 or h minus 3 at every node the avl property is satisfied similar thing happens in the case of a zigzag rotation let me just quickly go through this this is a node with h y will be h minus 1 x will be h minus 2 since the deletion happened on the right hand side the height of this is h minus 3 and there is a violation of avl property so if the height of y is h minus 1 and the uh, there is a violation of avl property at z then the height of t of 4 should be h minus 3 the t3 t1 can have either h minus 2 or h minus 3 and uh, t3 and t4 can have either h minus 3 or h minus 4 so t2 and t3 can be either h minus 3 or h minus 4 t1 is h minus 2 or h minus 3 so if this is h minus 2 independent of what is t2 the height of y will be h1 if the height of t1 is uh, h minus 3 then t2 it doesn't matter whether it is h minus 3 or h minus 1 the height of y will become uh, h minus 2 here uh, on the right hand side height of t4 is h minus 3 height of t3 is either h minus 3 or h minus 4 it doesn't matter what it is the maximum of height of t3 and t4 will be h minus 3 so the height of the node set will be h minus 2 so depending on the height of y whether it is h minus 1 or h minus 2 if it is h minus 1 uh, then the height of y by definition will be h and if this is h minus 2 then the max of both y and z has h minus 2 as the height so height of y will be h minus 1 so notice that the difference between the height at every node here is either 0 or 1 the avl property is restored and as before the height of the subtree may uh, uh, decrease or remain the same if it decreases decrease it and go up and uh, check for the violation of avl property if the avl property is violated again do the rotation and uh, if the avl property doesn't change check if the height actually changes if the height also doesn't change and the avl property is also not violated then your relation algorithm uh, stops 
so uh, notice that uh, in this case uh, when you go up uh, in each of these nodes you may have to do uh, deletions uh, uh, sorry rotations all the time so when you go up to the parent node the parent node also might violate the evil property so you end up doing one more rotation there so the number of rotations in this case can be as bad as order log n so uh, so one of the homework is uh, just to create a avl tree where uh, deletion of a node actually uh, requires uh, order um, log n number of um, rotations more specifically if the height of the tree is uh, let's say is uh, h then uh, create a tree you know avl tree with height h so that when you delete a node uh, the number of um, you know, rotations that you end up doing is uh, um, let's say h minus 2 okay so whatever it is uh, so the number of rotations that you are doing is order log n uh, so but each rotation here is a constant time operation right it requires just a few pointer changes so the entire deletion algorithm uh, is uh, works in order log n. Now let's quickly move on to uh, the uh, addition. Uh, the insertion is slightly easier. When you insert a node, uh, you go to the parent. So I inserted a node uh, in this diagram. So I came to this node, I go to the parent. This is the subtree where the insertion happened. I go to the node and check whether the height of this actually is changing. So uh, if at all it's changing because I inserted on the right hand side, the height only increase now. If the height increases, increase the height. Once you increase the height, check whether the AVL property is violated. Okay. If the height of this node doesn't change, then uh, at this node, the AVL property cannot be violated. So our, our algorithm stops, right? If the height doesn't change, then you don't have to check for the avl property violation because the height doesn't change in this case will imply that evil property is satisfied at this node and if you go to the parent height will not change and the avl property will not be violated so now let's just quickly think about the why if the height of this node doesn't change then uh, the avl property will be satisfied since i inserted on the right hand side right yeah so now when i come to this node uh, if the height doesn't change, height of this node has actually increased, right? That's why I'm going up all the time. If the height of this subtree did not change, then I'm, my algorithm would not have reached that. Height of this node has increased, but the height of this is not changing. That means that the height of this node is divided by the height of the node on the other side. Okay, so the height of this node before the uh, insertion was smaller than the height of this. So height of this was one plus the height of this. So this, this was a smaller, the number of, uh, the height of this was uh, smaller than the height of the other child. So the height of this node was already height of this. So now you slightly increased it, right? So, uh, which doesn't change the height of this. So height of this can at most become the height of this. So obviously there will be no change in the, uh, there's no violation of the APL property. So the AVL property will be violated only when the case, when the height of this node is dictated by the height of this. And when the height of this, uh, right now before the insertion, if the heights are all, the this was one less than the height of this, right? The difference between the height was one. And uh, when this node height increased, so when I went here, the height of this is increasing. But the difference was one, but since the height here has increased by one more, the difference suddenly becomes two. So there will be a violation of the AVL property. So what you need to check is that you go to a node, uh, check whether the height is updated. If the height is updated, then there will be no change in the, uh, the AVL property, you don't have to check. But if the height changes, then you check whether the AVL property is uh, violated. If there is a violation of the AVL property, just call the uh, rotation function with that node, which is right where there is a violation of AVL property. So your, uh, um, so, uh, your algorithm terminates when the height doesn't change. Now let's look at what is the impact of uh, doing rotation in this case. So as before, uh, so in this case, uh, the rotation, uh, so there's a violation of AVL property at Z. And the height of this is dictated by um, the height of uh, y. And uh, so the height in this case is increasing. 
So uh, I have inserted a node along this path in the subtree, right? So I have, uh, so the height of this has changed. Uh, if the height of Y was not changing, then I would not have gone to Z. Our algorithm says you go up only if the heights of these nodes are changing after you insert it. So the, the I inserted a node in the subtree rooted at uh, X. I went up, increased the heights. When I reached Z, uh, this was earlier H minus two. Now it has increased to H minus one. But the other child, since there is a violation of AVL property, the T4 should be H minus three. Now, when I come back to uh, uh, H1, um, Y, this node is where uh, the insertion happened and the height of this has actually increased. So that's why it is a H minus two. Now, in the case of deletion, we had written that either it is H minus three or H minus two. In this case, this cannot be H minus two, it has to be H minus three. If it is H minus two, then the height of Y would have been H minus one before I insert it. I inserted in the subtree rooted at Y in this case, right? So if I had in, uh, inserted a node in this subtree, and if this had already H minus two, then height of Y would have been already H minus one. So after inserting in the subtree rooted at Y, when I come to the node Y, the height of Y would not have changed. So my algorithm would have stopped. My algorithm would not have continued uh, till Z. So in this case, the height of T3 has to be H minus three, but height of T1 and T2 can be either H minus three or H minus four. The argument continues. Now this is either H minus three or H minus four, but the T4 in this case is currently H minus three. T4 is also H minus three. The height of Z is H minus two. Irrespective of the height of T1 and T2, height of X will be H minus two. So the height of Y in this case is H minus one. First, I increase the height of Z because of the increase of the height of Z, and then I check the, um, the evil property violation. The difference between the height here is two. That's why I did the rotation. When I did the rotation, height of this subtree actually decreases, and this subtree, the evil property is satisfied because the height of difference between this and this is zero, and here uh, T3, T4, the height difference is zero, and T3, T4 is either zero or one. So the ABL property is satisfied here. Most important thing is that uh, the height of the subtree decreases. It had increased before because of the uh, insertion of the node here. Now, after I do the rotation, uh, it has decreased. So if you go to the parent of this node, uh, the height will not change. So our uh, insertion algorithm will just terminate. So if there is a violation of ABL property, uh, if you just do one rotation, uh, we will restore the AVL property. Let's look at the other case. It's exactly the exact rotation. It's exactly the same as before. Uh, so I started with uh, uh, Z, height is H, H minus one, H minus two. This is H minus three because there is a violation of AVL property. T3 and T4, it can be either H minus three, H minus four. T3 in T1 in this case has to be H minus two. Sorry, H minus three. It cannot be H minus two because the, I inserted a node in the subtree rooted at Z, right? That's why the height of this increased. That's why I went to Y, increased the height, and then I reached Y. If the height of Y, uh, if the height of T1 is H minus two, and before the insertion itself, height of Y would have been H minus one. So even if I insert something here, height of Y would not have changed. So my algorithm would have stopped at Y. I would not have gone up to Z. So once the height of T1 is for sure is H minus three, just come back, the height of T1 and T2, T3, 4 after the rotation will not change. It is only the height of X, Y, Z will change. So the height of T1 is uh, H minus three, height of H2 and H3 is either H minus three or H minus four. So the height of T4 is H minus three. The first one is H minus three, the last one is H minus three, in between is either H minus three, H minus four, doesn't matter. So when I compute the height of Y, this will be the max of H minus three and H minus three or H minus four. The maximum will be H minus three. So the height becomes H minus two. Here, one of the node is H minus three. Other one can be again H minus three or H minus four. So when I take the maximum, the max turns out to be H minus three. So the height of this node is H minus two. Now, when I come to X, both the children has the same height. So the height of this will be H minus one. So 
If you notice that in each of these nodes, the ABL property is uh, satisfied and height of the subtree reduces because of the uh, rotation. Right? Height had increased because I inserted a node there. But when I did the rotation, height decreased. Now, if you go to the parent and check, uh, try to update the heights, it will not change. Okay, so because one height had increased, because the rotation it has decreased, so height of the this particular subtree is remaining same. So if you go to the parent, uh, the height of these nodes will not change. So the moral of the story is that um, um, when you do the uh, zigzag or zigzag zigzag rotation, either case, in the case of insertion, if you uh, you may have to do one rotation. Um, when you go to a parent node, the height may not increase. In the case, uh, uh, your algorithm terminates. Right, you don't have to do anything. Even if the height changes, you keep going, uh, going up, changing the height. Uh, there may be several changes in the heights. But if there is a violation of ABL property, you just stop there and do one rotation. After that, there will be no more changes in the height and uh, your algorithm terminates. So when you want to search, uh, when you want to add, you search for the location to add and take auto login. After that, every time you are going up, updating the heights. And uh, if the and checking whether the ABL property is violated, if the ABL property is violated, then you will do one rotation. That's the end of the algorithm. Okay. So the summary is that uh, uh, when you do deletion, uh, you may have to do log n number of rotations. But when you do insertions, um, you can uh, you may have to do at most one rotation. You may not have to do one, any rotation either in the case of delete or insert. But these are the upper bounds. The summary is that in a ABL tree, um, search, insert, and deletion uh, will happen in uh, you know, <coughs> order uh, long end. Yeah, that's the uh, end of this video. So uh, in the next video, we'll uh, just quickly, quickly look at the uh, code for uh, this insertions and uh, deletion. So what we need to just look at is uh, just copy paste the uh, code for the uh, rotations that I have written. After that, uh, uh, just convert uh, the algorithm for insert and delete into the code. In the next video, I'll quickly show the code for it. And after that, we will look at some interesting applications of uh, the ABL trees. So we will take a quick break and come back and uh, look at the uh, implementation of uh, this uh, deletion and insertion, more specifically, the implementation of this. Uh, uh, the rotations that we just discussed.